morning. morning. Welcome to Lutheran Memorial Church and School. Remember the Church Lutheran Confession, the CLC. Today we continue with our chapters to remember. We're looking at Romans chapter 12, one of my favorite chapters of the Bible. As you see, I have quite a few of those. As we look at the service today, we're going to be following the worship supplement, and the service is printed in the bulletin or on the projection screen in front of you. We begin this worship service with prayer. O Lord God, we come together to hear your holy word, that through the hearing of your word we may be brought to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and in death, and to grow day by day in your grace and holiness. Hear us now, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. We begin our Savior's divine worship service in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We open with the scene of hymn 395 out of the Red Hymnal, verses 1 through 5.
rise. We continue with our confession and absolution of sins. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from conception. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven you all your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. eternal God, you are more willing to hear than we are to pray, and willing to give more than we ever desire or deserve. Show us your abundant mercy, forgive the sins that strike at our conscience, and give us what is good, what we seek only on the basis of Jesus' sacrifice and his prayer for us, even as he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. As we celebrate this Labor Day weekend, uh, time to rest from our labors, Romans 12 is very fitting for us because there is one labor or work that we should never rest from, and that is from living a life to glorify our God and our Savior. The words of Romans 12 help us reflect on that our bodies, our lives, are to be living sacrifices for God, ones that are fit for His service in proclaiming His message. Please follow along with me in the bulletin as we read through this important chapter to remember from Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, Acceptable to God, 
which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches, in teaching. He who exhorts, that is, lifted up, in ex exhortation. He who gives, with liberality. He who leads, with diligence. And he who shows mercy, with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Truly blessed are they who hear the word of God and treasure it. reading we just read, there was a lot of do this, behave this way, none of which would be possible without the Holy Spirit. That's why we're making use of Luther's explanation to the third article, what the Holy Spirit works in our hearts. Let us rise to boldly proclaim the work of God. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give to me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. We continue with our hymn of the day, hymn 464. Please be seated.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, they say that diamonds are forever. Really? Forever? Would you agree with that? Is it because diamonds are so strong? Is that why people say that? Is it because they are so pretty that they last in thought and emotion forever? Or is it because they are so valuable? Does the value of a diamond last forever? When it comes to diamonds, nobody likes to be taken as a fool. Nobody likes to be cheated. Nobody likes a fake. That's why a genuine diamond is very valuable and very rare. When we think about the value of a diamond, it is something to be cherished, something to be valued, something that's worth protecting and taking special care of. That's what the Apostle Paul is talking about in our verses today in his letter to the Roman Christians. But he wasn't talking about diamonds. He was talking about something more misunderstood, something of greater value, and really he's talking about a word that the world over really doesn't know how to define because it misuses the word all the time. That word that is more valuable than any diamond and that needs to be understood by each one of us on a daily basis is, of course, the word love. What does Paul write to us about the word love today in Romans 12? He says in verses 9 through 13, as you see printed in your bulletin or on the projection screen, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Our theme for today is serving the Lord with His sincerity. And as I was working on the sermon, I realized it's so similar to loving our Savior with His type of love. When we think about that, we need to recognize that loving with our Savior's love is more than just an appearance. And just looking through these few short verses here of our sermon meditation, verse 9 of Paul's letter to the Christians of Rome really ought to stick out to us like a, a sore thumb. When he says very boldly, let love be without hypocrisy. What does that mean? I'm guessing most of you know what a hypocrite is. A person who is not genuine, is not sincere, really faking what he or she claims to be. Like a fake diamond, a hypocrite may look great on the outside, but inside there is really no real or lasting value because it is not genuine. True, real, and lasting love, as Paul reminds us, is without hypocrisy. James 5.12 simply says, Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Think about what that means. We get to ask how people are doing when we greet them, whether it be here at church, or in the workplace, or as we're going about our daily activities. Do we really care what's going on in their life? Or are we playing the hypocrite? Anyone can play the hypocrite and say, I'm being sincere, and not be sincere. Many people sincerely swear to God that they're telling the truth, but sincerity is more than appearance. It's more than just saying that you're sincere. It's more than saying that you should believe me in what I'm telling you. It is loving with our Savior's love. And that's loving truth. That's loving and living without hypocrisy. Paul explains what sincere love really looks like in verse 10 when he writes, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another. 
Now, so far, my friends, we're still not really going past what the world already knows to be wise. When it says there in verse 10, in honor, giving preference to one another, what does it sound like? It's just like saying, think of others first before you think of yourselves. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The world knows this and considers it to be wise. That's what giving preference to one another means. To think of the other person first. This wisdom serves very well in any of our relationships, whether it be a pair of friends, thinking of the other person first, and listening and caring about what's going on in their life, whether it be between a parent and a child, actually listening to your children's complaints and needs. When you think about a pair of siblings, so easy for us to despise our siblings because of maybe favoritism or how things are going for them in comparison with their lives. How about a husband and wife? Putting the other person's needs before our own, how often does that happen? What does it mean to be sincere and genuine in our love, but simply to think of the other person first? Of course, this is good advice. But do we treat God's word that way? Do we hear the wisdom of God's word and it simply is good advice that we don't put into practice, that we don't use? Are we, as verse 10 says, kindly affectionate to one another? Are we devoted to each other and the lives of one another? Do you know the name of the person sitting next to you in the pew? Do you know or care about their life? Do you encourage or pray for the person sitting a short distance away from you or across the church? Imagine that. Galatians 6.10 says clearly, so then while we have opportunity, while we're living, let us do good to all men and especially to those who are of the household of the faith. When we think about this verse, loving with our Savior's love is much more than an appearance. It is living without hypocrisy. But that's not all. Loving with our Savior's love is also more than just an emotion. What happens when the relationship doesn't feel like there's much love there anymore between the friends or the child and parent or the siblings or the husband and wife? I just don't feel like they love me, or that I like, love them. The problem is what happens when both people start thinking of themselves first, which is our sinful inclination to do. What happens when we get so good at pushing the buttons of other people to irritate them? What then? What happens when harsh words are yelled, feelings are crushed, and that diamond of love loses its sparkle? What then? What do we do? That's when the world's definition of love doesn't cut it. That's when the diamond isn't enough. It doesn't have the strength to last forever. And that's why Paul writes in the first part of this chapter, in verse 2, of what we need to do. He says in Romans 12, 2, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. To prove here in these verses simply means to test its value. Just like you would test the value of a diamond by testing its cut, color, or clarity. We test and prove God's will for our lives. A life that he created for us to display his kind of of love. You and I know painfully well that God tests us and we fail. You think about a parent or a teacher-student relationship, God is our teacher, how frustrating we must get. And all the tests that he lays before us. And all the times we fail and fail those tests. We don't like God's will by nature. God's will says no to you and me with the things that we want to do. God says, I can't have whatever I want. Oh, man. 
He says, I shouldn't use foul or dirty language. I should glorify his name and not use his name to curse or swear. God says, I shouldn't have sex outside of marriage. He says, I shouldn't trash people's reputations or covet or crave their possessions. God calls his behavior sinful and evil and that they don't honor him. In fact, they make us look like a hypocrite when we continue in these things. That's why Paul goes on in verse 9 giving one firm truth with two opposite phrases. He says clearly, abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. In other words, hate evil, love good. Now we need to clarify that for a moment, don't we? Because we're not saying what I call good and evil, but what God calls good and evil. There's a big difference it's easy for us to be drawn away into the evils and cares of this world. 1 Corinthians 15, 33-34 says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Paul is talking to Christians here who know better, who continue to be carried away by evil. Maybe it's the company that they keep. Maybe it's the things that they watch on TV. What we surround ourselves with will affect our lives as Christians. So the Lord speaks it to our shame when we despise his word or his will for our lives. 1 Corinthians 13 puts it this way. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity or sin, but rejoices in the truth. What I love about 1 Corinthians 13 is any time you have that implied love, we see our Savior and his love for us. You go back to 1 Corinthians 13 and read it and say, Jesus never behaved rudely. He does not seek his own. He is not provoked. He thinks no evil towards us. Jesus does not rejoice in iniquity. He does not rejoice in our sin, but rejoices in the truth. The truth that he expresses to us as his beloved children again today. Truth about love. Loving with our Savior's love doesn't look to our own earthly pleasures or emotions. Rather, the love of God's word transforms and renews our minds in Christ. Just as verse 10 says, to be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. That kind of love there, that brotherly love, is more than emotion that we fall in and out of like so many people do today. I love them, I love them not. I love them, which am I going to do? This kind of love is a commitment love. The kind of love you see between parents and children. The kind of love that doesn't stop when you feel like, I don't love them anymore. This kind of brotherly love is the commitment love that we see explained and even emphasized deeper in verse 9 when it says, let love be without hypocrisy. That Greek word for love, agape, is self-sacrificing. Selflessness. See the love of our Savior here. Because this is the kind of love he has for us. The kind of love that expects no return. The mercy of our Lord. The kind of love that is unexpected from God. That word we call grace. Undeserved love from our almighty God. Despite our wickedness. Despite our evil. That grace is there. The kind of love that our Savior shows that has no room for hypocrisy. The kind of love where hypocrisy is not even known. That's the kind of love of our Savior. That kind of love is perfect and pure and reminds us that God, our Savior's love, is demonstrated for us. His own love toward us, as it says in Romans 5, 8, and that while we were still sinners, while we were still God's enemies, Christ died for us. That 
is love. Beyond any world definition. Because we see this love, and this is how we know what true love really is. That this loving with our Savior's love is more than an emotion or feeling. It redefines the word love for us as commitment. It redefines the word love from our sin and our rebellion. And after finishing his work on the cross, Jesus shows us his love and giving us the hope of the resurrection from the dead. He shows us and he raises our hearts to life through his sincere, through his committed, through his self-sacrificing love we read through the word of God. What a blessing it is that we see this heart of faith that he's raised to life. We see that that life has been created now to do, as Paul says, not lacking. It says in verse 11, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, Distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. This list here is something we can and we should all pray for. To have that kind of love that our Savior has for us. They say that diamonds are forever. But there is nothing more valuable, more priceless, and more lasting than our Savior's type of love. Because that love is eternal. Because the Spirit has defined for us today. And may the Spirit continue to define for each one of us what true love really means. And teach us to be loving one another with our Savior's love. In order that we are able to continue serving each other and serving the Lord with His kind of sincerity. Amen. Please rise. May this peace of our Savior's love continue to guard and keep your hearts and your minds in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. sermon hymn that is printed in your bulletin, after which the offering of thankful hearts will be received. Please be seated.
We pray this morning for our sister in Christ, Verdell Manowski. She's a shut-in up in Oshkosh. This past Sunday, the Lord, in his wisdom, called her husband, Stanley, from this world. And so we pray that the Lord would give strength and encouragement to those uh, in her family and herself as well to have that strength in the Lord's hope of the resurrection. With this prayer in our general prayer for today, let us pray. O Lord God, who deals in mercy and truth with those who receive your promises by faith, we praise you for the glorious gospel of your grace. For in this good news we learn of your ancient promises of a Savior, which were fulfilled at just the right time when you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and rose again on the third day, so that by trusting in him we might be eternally saved. Grant that we may ever acknowledge our own sin and guilt and true repentance, turn to you for your forgiveness, and be cleansed from all iniquity. Give us genuine humility of spirit. Empower us by your grace to escape the corruption that surrounds us in this evil world through lust. And in order to make us fruitful in all good things, in the service of our Savior, fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit and kindle in us the fire of your love. Bestow the Holy Spirit upon your church, O Lord, that it may go forth into all the world, bearing your precious gospel and preaching Christ crucified among all nations for the remission of sins and the hope of eternal life. We pray for Verdell this morning and her family of the hope that they have for the eternal life for Stanley. Comfort their souls through your word and help them to see that your will is always good to those who love God. We continue to pray also for your church so that you would help and protect them from all its enemies, workers of evil, and those who pervert and twist the truth of the Bible, so that your people may know no other gospel besides the true word of grace to which the scriptures testify. We pray for our country and its leaders, that all in our land may live in peace, safety, and honor. We pray for our schools, that it continues to be taught and allowed that the word of God is okay to believe and follow, and that evolution would be done away with. Lord, hear the prayers of all the afflicted, the sorrowful and those who mourn, the needy and the homeless, the wounded and all those who are in pain or distress. Lead them by your mercy to a happy conclusion to all of their adversaries. And deliver us, O God, from every evil of body or soul. And at the last, when the hour of death shall come, grant us a blessed end, and take us from this world of sorrow to yourself in heaven. Grant us these and all other necessary things on account of your infinite mercy and grace in Christ Jesus. For it is in his name that we've also been taught how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We close with the last verse of hymn 381. Let's remain standing.
welcome to all of you here today. Glad you can be in the Lord's house to learn again what true love really means. Uh, guests, please sign our guest book in the entryway, and we truly pray you'll join us again. Uh, a couple of announcements I want to call your attention to really quickly in, in the bulletin. Um, this Tuesday, we do have our ladies' committee meeting starting up for the fall, and we're going to be having a Sunday school teachers' meeting after that. It's at 6.30 on Tuesday. Also, we're still looking for volunteers for the Fondue Fest next Saturday. We have those two session breakdowns, and the breakdown there is there in the, um, on the bulletin board. So we have a morning shift from 8 to noon and from noon to 4. We'll need that, we'll need that help for setting up and taking down and preventing the booth. Um, also, next Sunday we begin our fall schedule. Please remind other people. I'll try to put out another announcement during the week as well. So we start our Bible class in Sunday school next Sunday at 9 a.m. Uh, just a reminder that Bible class will be going through that uh, course that myself and the other pastor wrote. And if you'd like to sign up for a copy of that, I will have loose copies there. I would encourage you all to come. It would be a great refresher, catechism type work. Um, so if you can make it uh, this next Sunday and for that series, uh, I think it will be a very a beneficial thing to discuss and study. Uh, so the church service is at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Uh, also, uh, we have a special voters meeting coming up two weeks from today on September 14th. More details on what's going to be talked about is in the bulletin on that. Uh, basically looking at uh, the project costs for the future planning of the church with the updates that need to happen or the possible expansion of a, a first floor fellowship hall gathering area. So all are welcome to stay after Sunday, that September 14th meeting. And listen, uh, voters, uh, you are encouraged and expected to be here. For that meeting, so please plan accordingly. Um, I'm not thinking I'm forgetting other, any other announcements. Oh, there's a, the movie night there coming up also on September 12th. Uh, so everyone, uh, we're going to be having it outside here. You can pull up in your car, sit in your car, try to have popcorn for you too, and we can bring blankets and sit outside. It's always a fun time. It should be cool out. So uh, that's 8 o'clock, September 12th. It's a Friday night. Hope you guys can make it. Any other announcements that I'm forgetting? Lord, continue to be with you as we continue to display his kind of love. Uh, we'll be greeting out. Uh, ushers won't be ushering out, so go as you choose to. Have a great week.